Hey there guys, what is going on? I am back for a new series. As you may have guessed from the title, it is the 2030 Challenge, where I'm going to take over one of the teams in England from League 2 or above in 2030, obviously in a largely regenerated world, and see how I get on. Obviously a lot's changed. I, um, I haven't actually looked at the leagues in a while. I haven't actually looked at who's doing well, who's had a dramatic fall from grace in the 15 years that I've been on holiday. But I guess this is what this first part is about, to be honest. Uh, giving you guys a look into the world according to FM in 2030 and um, seeing who would make an interesting save and uh, help, hopefully you guys can help me decide who I'm going to be for this 2030 series. Um, let's get into it now. Um, this is League 2 then. I'm going to have a look at the league tables of the previous season, just to see how people have got on. This is 29 to 2030. Uh, Newport County and Bradford going down. Blackpool um, continuing what seems to be a demise at the moment, uh, finishing in 21st place. Uh, Millwall down there in League Two, that could be interesting. Uh, other than that, not too many surprises in terms of, oh, Wigan were, Wigan were in League Two. Uh, until last season when they got promoted. Uh, Grimsby doing well to get promoted into League One. It could be interesting to carry on their good run, but um, you've also got Mansfield doing very well indeed to go all the way up to League One. In terms of League One, let's have a look. Three of Villa's Midlands rivals getting promoted from League One. Sickening. Although the Tesco bags <laughs> are still su stuck in League One. Charlton not doing very well. Kidderminster Harriers and Torquay. Fair play to them. Starting, of course, in the Vanarama Conference, establishing themselves in League One, it would seem. Going down from League One, MK Dons or Franchise FC, depending on which way you're inclined, with Fleetwood, Northampton and Portsmouth, who I think have really failed to establish... Yeah, they've failed to establish themselves again as a Premier League club. Uh, they've got Ryan Bertrand in charge, such is the crazy nature of this world. Yeah, they're, the best sort of period they had was where they were challenging for the playoffs in League One towards the end of the 2020s. Since then, they've been sort of they've been sort of yo-yoing between League One and Two. Pretty surprising, if you ask me. The Championship looks like this. Villa are down in the Championship. Oh, that's a very tempting save to do. To do the team I support, try and return them to where they belong. That sounds very intriguing. Swansea are down there with Sunderland, other Premier League clubs, former Premier League clubs. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. Burnley, actually, they were Premier League when they started. Um, sort of an established championship team now, it would seem. Not too dissimilar, the championship, between um, how it is now and how it is in 2030, which is a little bit surprising. Plymouth. Wow, Plymouth have been promoted to the Premier League. Plymouth Argyle, you are joking. Paul Dickov, in charge of Plymouth, has led the uh, Green Army to the Premier League. That is astonishing. I, I think that would be the sort of uh, Burnley-type save, wouldn't it? Just the doomed Premier League club who've just come up and are said to be the whipping boys. And uh, it's a test of whether you can make sure they're not. Uh, Newcastle and Palace, uh, other former Premier League clubs, have uh, made the jump to the Premier League for this season. So last season, the Premier League finished like this. Sort of familiar names at the top. You've got Chelsea winning the league from Spurs by one point. Unlucky for Spurs. Uh, the two Manchester clubs sitting pretty behind them. Uh, not too many surprises there. Stoke and Hull, OP on FM, you'd expect them to do well. Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth up there. I, I get the feeling those are two clubs you'd expect to be up there at some point anyway. But Liverpool finishing in mid-table as well as Arsenal, that's a surprise. Two very well-established sort of Champions League clubs at one point have now sort of sunk to a mid-table Premier League level. So that could be a very intriguing save to try and return them to Champions League glory, perhaps. Looking further down, Sheffield United and Brentford surviving in the Premier League. Uh, kudos to them. Everton becoming relegation strugglers. Uh, going down, Norwich and Sheffield Wednesday and Peterborough in what looked like a pretty close relegation battle. So fair play to them for holding out for as long as they did, really. In terms of the competition history of the Premier League since I started to holiday, uh, it's been, in recent years, dominated by Chelsea and Spurs. But before that, sort of, 
in the more recent future, Man City winning five titles in about 10 years, Liverpool winning quite a few as well. So I think the sort of balance of power has changed quite a bit. And it's gone from Man City, Liverpool to sort of Tottenham and Chelsea. So the momentum has sort of swung southwards uh, in that regard. If we look at the Champions League, that should give us an idea of who really has been dominant in terms of sort of European and world football. Juventus have won the, uh, well, three of the last seven. That's very impressive for them. They've been runner-up on another occasion as well. The most recent one won by Bayern Munich, their first Champions League in about nine years. Chelsea had in another. And uh, also Spurs had a, a period where they were really dominant in Europe, winning three of the of the previous four Champions Leagues. Arsenal adding their name to the list as well. Um, England really have been dominant, it seems like, up until 2025, of course. I mean, the dominance was such that even Southampton were runners-up in the Champions League. That is just insane. Another interesting thing to look at, maybe, is who's won the um, Ballon d'Or in the previous uh, few seasons. As you can see here, this guy isn't even a regen, and he's won the Ballon d'Or in 2030. Fair play to him, Guido Vidala. I think you've probably heard of him if you play FM avidly. As you can see, he's a very well-rounded player, and I guess if he um, if he had some good form that season, why not give him the Ballon d'Or? Uh, second place was Benjamin Sturm, a midfielder from Germany. This guy is a regen. Um, he would be about 15 years old um, at this point in time. But as you can see, it's developed into a cracking player. And this guy, wow, so much yellow just jumping into my face. He's a striker. He's got 20 off the ball and 15 finishing, 20 composure. He's deadly. He's absolutely deadly. I'm surprised, to be honest, that he didn't win the Ballon d'Or. He must have had a comparatively poor year. Or maybe uh, there's a conspiracy against him. Who knows? But he looks like an extremely good player. In previous years... Well, three different people in the top three of the Ballon d'Or. You would not get that these days. There must be such an array of world-class talent. Everyone winning the Ballon d'Or also seems to be very experienced. We haven't had a player under the age of 30, I don't think, even in the running so far. This guy's a winger. He's obviously very, very good. Luis Calvo, 28 now. He was 26 when he was third in the Ballon d'Or running. I think he has developed into... An extremely good player as well. Going back a few more years, back to sort of the more recent um, future, David Silva won the Ballon d'Or in the first year. That's pretty curious with as Ibra and Koke rounding off the top three. Uh, the next three were won by Leo Messi. Iniesta, at the age of 163, winning the Ballon d'Or in 2018, with Messi picking up the next two. So um, how many is that? For Messi, so there's five there in addition to the, I think it was it was three. So eight Ballon d'Ors um, in his time as a footballer. That's just unprecedented, surely. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo getting another in 2021 to take his total up to three, I think. The rest were just regens, to be honest, um, or pe people are still playing away until Neymar in 2024 at the age of 32 was the best player in the world. Uh, he's now a manager. Who has he managed? Is it achievements? Um, I don't actually think he's managed anyone. He just wants to become a manager. And so far he's been unsuccessful in doing so. Don't want this video to be too long, but I'm just going to have a look at who has done well in the World Cup uh, during the time that I have been on holiday. There it is, the World Cup. We are actually slap bang in the middle of the 2030 World Cup as it is, so I think maybe I'll have to let you know who actually won the next World Cup when I actually choose my save and holiday and sort of continue past it. But uh, I've just seen this guy's name, Lucas Lucas. That's a, <laughs> that's a very amusing name. Um, bags of imagination his parents must have had. But nevertheless, he is on the uh, most assists chart, so he must be doing something right. Anyway, the past winners, it's been an even split between Spain and Germany. Maybe a little bit predictable that, but nevertheless, at least FM has been realistic here and not just had the Ivory Coast in the final or something stupid like that.
which I've seen on some occasions, sort of nearer to the present than this. I think I once saw a, I think it was on FM 2005, a World Cup final between Serbia and Montenegro and the Ivory Coast. So I think it's a refresh. An extremely disruptive biker there rushing past me. Nevertheless, yeah. I've lost my trail of thought, so I'm just going to do something else. Anyway, guys, I just made this video to sort of uh, say hi. Wow. Again. Anyway, guys, I just made this video sort of to say hi. How are you doing? Please help me choose a team because there's such an array of interesting, or potentially interesting saves that we can do. I'm loving the Plymouth Challenge. They've just gone out by the playoffs. They started in League 2. I wonder how they're going to go about surviving. It's going to be really interesting. There's other interesting teams in the Premier League, though with Sheffield United, Bournemouth, etc. But um, I'm willing to go to any team between the Premier League and League 2, so any of the 92 could be very interesting indeed. Uh, I'm going to try and wrap this video up now anyway. Uh, please help me choose by posting a comment below of who you think is the most interesting team and who you would like to see me manage in this series. And that's going to be it for this episode and probably this week because... Obviously, I need to get your guys' input on who I should be, probably factor in my own opinion in the decision as well, and, and create a backlog, really, of uploads so that um, I don't run out and I don't trip off over myself and I don't have to leave it, like, six years between uploads. Because that does create problems. Yeah, that's it for this episode. Take care of yourselves, guys. I'll see you next week.